thank you for this time thank you for this gathering that you have planned and you have designed Lord we pray that today as i speak you give me the right words you give me the right examples you give me the right tune to share your word to share your heart to share your thoughts i give this time into your hand lord amen amen a couple of months back i don't know a month back or two months back uh, uh, this actor if you've heard of uh, the avenger actor of uh, black panther uh, chadwick boseman he passed away a month back or a couple of months back and there was a whole lot of uh, social media uh, tribute that was done in his name and i was just going through all of those and i happened to stop at a video of a speech which he delivered in the university of harvard and uh and that really caught my eye and i almost got sucked into what he said and he was talking to this fresh graduates out of harvard and and all of this young uh you know probably early 20s or late 20s uh, girls and boys they were aspiring to go out of the college and take fancy jobs and you know make a lot of money and he said something don't find a job find a purpose and that that stuck me and that 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 moved me that that made me think how many of us here think in that way how many of us actually drive our life to find the actual purpose how many of us actually strive every single day to fulfill what is the purpose or the assignment that is given to you and me by the way everyone here has a purpose do you agree that yes. if you don't we can pray for you oh that was a joke come on everyone here has a purpose everyone uh, here has been assigned a purpose at the very beginning it's you and me how we can identify that's up to us you know that's what i want to try and you know touch today because in last 6 7 months i have interacted with at least three or four people you know that i know that i've uh, you know talk regularly or interact regularly saying the statement that i don't know what is my purpose you know i i, I have no idea what i'm supposed to do i don't know what i would be uh doing 2 years down the line or 3 years down the line i have no clue how it's going to turn out to be you know i'm just going with the flow have you heard that word i remember pastor priji once joked if you are someone who is going with the flow you will go and there's no uh turning back on the right path you know you will be carried away and that's actually a a wrong statement to say or project that i am going with the flow because you and me are not just supposed to be navigate this journey in a very stereotype we have a very designed uh you know standard approach which is already preset for you and me which is which is given to us when um god chose you and me by the way god gave this idea not just to the believers but everyone out there in the world but it becomes even more important for us because now as a believer we represent as his sons and daughter amen? amen so it's important to understand the whole uh um, you know the gambit of the purpose what is the purpose what is the what is the what is the main purpose that i am here that i am uh you know existing in this life or i'm existing in this time frame and every season has a purpose by the way but there's one major purpose that we all have ultimate purpose let's call it as that way that is to glorify god's name do you agree on that yes every single moment every single aspect of our life our interactions our discussions are uh you know 
personality characteristics everything should be a point that we take and we glorify his name but in this process in this journey you know there are there is a individual purpose that you and me always have and that's exactly what i want to focus or that's exactly what i want to understand uh, you know in this discussion and i just want to give you some ideas uh, and then we can work around it amen now think about this when you say someone someone who's you know graduated out of or like a fresh fresh graduate out of this prestigious college and they are they they they've been thrown at different offers at, at their front and you tell them that don't find a job find a purpose what is the mindset that someone would have you know if i was there i would like okay i'll pick the best paying job because you know of course money is good and money is something that we all need but when we align with the understanding of purpose with what is offered you know it changes the whole agenda it changes the whole uh, gambit you know the, i've known someone who who have just left everything that he has just to pursue what god is trying to tell just to uh, just to obey god's word just to obey what god you know wants him to do in that specific season i've known some crazy people like that and it takes courage it takes you know that immense faith to take that first step and say that i am aligning my purpose with what is god's purpose amen, amen. do you also agree that we are not perfect in this journey we have our own faults we have our own limitations which means we have those down time you know when we struggle to find that purpose but let me tell you one thing if you are in that place if you are struggling to identify what it is you got to be patient you got to be patient in this journey like as as the word says for everything for everything there is a there's a season or there's a time for everything there is a time that is assigned allotted now if we try to you know fast track it we might not really get the desired result what god has already prepared for you and me so i want to encourage if you are in that state where you feel that you don't have a purpose where you see that you don't have a goal or a vision that you want to do with your life i'll say hang on can we do that can we do that can we at least put this thought process saying that i can i can wait i can hold on and i'll see how things will change and i'll see things moving at the right time i'll see the things changing at the time that god has ordained for it amen, amen. so one of the one of the major side of it like why we struggle with this question you know what is my purpose is because of uh, the pressure that you have from the whole society do you agree on that i don't know if you have experience but i have experienced this you know whenever someone uh, does something you know they they are expected to get this x number of uh, x figure of salary they are expected to do good in their life this is all society pressure that comes in yes no come on communicate talk to me if you can you know, yes that's 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 good my brother it's it's a society pressure that always pulls you and me you know in in a way uh, my friend is doing good i should also do good you know like how i ended up on my first job this was about 15 years back fresh out of college and honestly i didn't wanted to work okay i was i was planning the whole season to chill out and uh, do nothing and i knew for the fact that uh, this i have to take up some job at some day and i was ready for that but i had my season planned you know i was good at planning i had season plan like go to chill apparently my friend who was also my neighbor back then he joined a company and he started working there and of course if you're neighbor and if you are especially if you are from a malayali family things goes around right what happens in that house comes to this house right so they came uh, 
question from my mom saying that uh, why aren't you going for any job are you even not searching for it okay i said i have season plan i don't want to work uh, in this span of time but uh, but that made me feel guilty like when my mom said that you know look at that your friend is going for work what are you chumma doing sitting at home nothing that that made me feel that i have to push myself uh, but nothing wrong what i did what i'm trying to say or a magnify here is the pressure which is there in the society but uh, I, i would say praise god that i took that step at that point of time and i god gave me a direction what i'm supposed to do with my the corporate career and i'm i'm glad that i took that step uh, but my idea was to give you the concept of pressure now in fact even in bible when 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 there was a there was a a lot of pressure on this one particular plant you know when jesus wanted food do you remember which plant was that there was a tree in fact fig tree what was jesus uh, what was jesus requirement at that point of time he wanted food he was so hungry he was coming out of a meeting uh, back then no mcdonalds no swiggy nothing he has to find it what is there on the road he happened to come across this fig tree and he went searching for fruit it's a fruit by the way and what happened there was no fruit what did jesus say i curse you you shall never produce a fruit i think in bible that was one um non i can't say non living thing but a living thing which doesn't have which is a tree who was under a lot of pressure because it was jesus who was telling the tree that i curse you because you couldn't give me the food now exactly in that way you know we have i'm not saying jesus was putting pressure but jesus was trying to explain a parable out of it okay so i'm trying to give you the bigger picture how it generally happens for us as we navigate in this life the next morning as they were leaving bethany jesus was hungry he noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off so he went over to see if he could find any figs but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for the fruit then jesus said to three may no one ever eat your fruit again it was little early in the season have you been in that place where you're early in the season and you've been pushed to do something you feel that you're not qualified you feel that you're not ready to do this but you've been pushed into that stage you know can i tell you it brings the best out of it of course in the natural it wasn't possible for fig tree to produce a fruit directly but if i apply this in our life it always yields good result i'll give you one example i always had stage fear and i remember back I, i've shared this many times and I, I, put, I was put on a spot when I was 10 year old in front of a thousand people capacity auditorium and I goofed up what I was supposed to say. Can you imagine how embarrassing that could be? Luckily back then there was no camera. So this, that, that's not on video. That day that, that thing created a fear. You know, every time I had an opportunity to go on stage, it always pulled me back. and then came a season where i met many of my um you know mentors or man of god you know who always pushed me to the capacity and when i was pushed i realized that this is something that i'll get or this is something that i'll achieve if i put my you know put my full of efforts trying understanding it so if you are dealing with a situation wherein you're not able to find a purpose i would try or rather i would say try out exploring different things try out things that fascinates you try out things that makes you excited to work on try out doing stuff that really gives you a great joy and you know, i've known a friend who who did schooling with me after 10th standard he did uh, uh hotel management okay that was a very popular thing about 15 years back after hotel management he came back and he did uh, graduation which was like a normal thing and after graduation he did mba now i would say 
if you had to do mba if you had to do graduation why did you do something called as hotel management which is not in line with what of any of these things that we just said you understand what i'm trying to say where i'm going with this so if i have been pushed if i've been trying and i've been exploring that i would have an opportunity to discover what i want to do what i want to achieve what i want to really get as a result out of this whole you know the agenda that i have in my head so on that i want to say that god wants you and wants you and me to fulfill his purpose and that's quite evident that's that's quite important because numerous time god has told us or god has mentioned this how important we are for him i import how important you know we play in his life in his whole existence or in his whole understanding of who god is it starts all the way in genesis in the chapter 1 genesis is a brilliant book have you ever read it yes. amen every single scenario god uh, you know is creating something or the other there is a different episode of day 1 he creates or uh, something day two he creates something three four and on the sixth day what what he creates he creates us if you if you read the word carefully every time he created something he said that i like it i don't know if you've noticed that it's good i like it or it's good and when he created us he said i like it very good can you see the importance or the elevation that we got from the things that he have already created the differentiation between the other things of his creation and what we were in existence god always put us in a place where we were very close to him or we are close to him in that way so this is the first purpose that you know that 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 god embedded or god actually gave us saying that then god said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness even back then god was in partnership with the holy trinity that you can say and that's why it says let us can you read that again let us make mankind in our own image in our own likeness which means the first and foremost purpose that god has assigned god has given is to have his likeness is to have a characteristic that he uh, you know he is known for for example if if i i play cricket for example i'm just taking an example if i play cricket and if i'm if i play like this famous player let's call it him sachin tendulkar if i play like him generally i have referred saying that you know joe plays like sachin can you understand which means the characteristics of sachin is transferred to me while was this was it like was it something that i owned was it something that i bought it was just an impression that someone picked here is a god who is saying that in our likeness which means what we are here with different uh, background with different nationality with different uh, culture with different uh, language that we speak we all are joined together in his likeness we all are same in his likeness so this becomes our first and foremost purpose to be like him can you repeat this to be like him to be like him to be like him and what does it takes nothing there's nothing that you have to invest it it's already you know injected into my dna it's already you know uh, what do you say it is already uh, mixed with my dna the only thing that we have to do is walk in his way walk according to his word walk according to what his idea would be here and not my idea amen 
that's what my first point is which says god wants you and me to fulfill his purpose can we be that generation can we be that group of people who work towards fulfilling his purpose and not your and my purpose see again i'm not saying that our personal aspirations are wrong no i'm not saying that but our personal aspiration should not be bigger than what god's purpose is for us amen amen, amen. now why i say that is because practically i i i dealt with this um you know thought in my mind for a very very long time um you know and i and and i align my understanding saying this i would not do anything which is not in line with god's principle you know we live in such a world wherein we are thrown at different scenarios we are thrown at different situation wherein we don't really think what god would have done in that case okay i'll give you one classic example and this is something that we agreed at home you know as uh, you know when we got married and we said that music okay music is a very you know thing that happens in every house and uh, we both enjoyed bollywood music i don't know you enjoy it we both enjoyed that beats and everything as you know something that we 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 really like but there came a point where we discussed that this is good there's no harm in that but anything that deviates from the purpose of god is a cancel anything which is not which is not glorifying god's name is a big no and i think that that's a principle that you know we both have built as you know we bring caitlin up and we made sure that we'll play stuff on television which you know we know which is in line with god you know caitlin is hardly a year but you know that puts a lot of understanding you know when they are very small they grasp everything that that early stage so that's one of the example what i'm trying to say anything that is not in line anything that is not in in conjunction in understanding of what god's purpose you have to take off you have to cut off you have to cut your tie with that uh, with that scenario it could be business if your business is something that is not involving god it is against the principle of god i would say take a look at it is there a way around is there a better way to do that if your work involves you in a situation wherein you're not really aligning with the understanding of what god is all about i would say go back and analyze that the idea is find a purpose and i'm sure each one of us here have a purpose it's just that we got to walk on the right path it's just that we got to discover the right path to achieve that purpose and as i said at the start it's not easy you know there are instances wherein we all go through that fall but let me assure you that we are still the same you know baby or we still the sons and daughter of what god you know looks at us which means we are irreplaceable for him okay repeat this i am irreplaceable for god what does that mean that god can't replace sijo joanna no doesn't matter how much we go off track god still has the same agenda or the same goal which was given to sijo which was given to joanna which was given to joe are you understanding it yeah we're not that pet which we feel like okay let's we can't do this let's give it to someone else you know have, have you have you had anyone who had a pet and they had to give it away because they couldn't manage it yeah <laughs> crazy people right i know one of my one of my friend um, who uh, you know who got this little puppy you know all puppies look good when they're small right and he was so fascinated to bring this puppy home and um, you know whole family felt like they had a new member and you know dog grows fast you know they they kind of become like um, five feet tall in a matter of four five months and at some point of time after six months they couldn't take care of this puppy who is now a full dog what they did they went and gave it to someone else but tell me tell me one thing how we that no we're not that puppy that can be easily replaced 
We are sons and we are daughters of God. There is no way that something else would take our place. We are irreplaceable. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed you in the womb, come on, can we read all this together? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet to the nation. Today morning, I'm talking to the prophets of nations. I don't know if you believe that, but I believe that you guys are prophets to the nations. It's the affirmation that God says that I knew you even before you were born. And we are set apart from the rest of the world. We are set apart from every other creation that you see. We have been elevated from every other positions that God has ordained or God has created. You know, as we say, you know, we get this opportunity to sit there at the right hand of the Father. That's a privilege. That's an access that no one else have. Amen. If you, if you end up saying this, that I am this, I am that, I can't do this, you know, I am worthless. I, I, I have no idea that if I can be that, be this. Let me tell you, stop that. You got to stop saying that today. Why? Because you and I are the masterpiece that that God created. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created a new in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us. You have to believe that you are God's masterpiece. And can you understand what is masterpiece? What, have, what, what is the word that masterpiece means? Anyone? Sorry, original copy. Who is that? <laughs> you have first copy, second copy, many copies. But the one that is original, that comes fresh out of factory, the branded factory is like masterpiece. You know, and that could uh, be charged like in thousands and thousands of dollars. Like uh, if you've ever been crazy about sneakers, there's this famous brand called as Jordan Sneakers. It's the expensive sneaker that you'll ever find. And one sneaker would cost you like $15,000. That's like huge money. But I can get you the, the second first copy for 1,500 rupees from Mumbai. Exactly the same. Can you see the difference of the worth, of the value that the masterpiece has and something that is first and second copy has. So the moment you realize that you are a masterpiece, every aspect of you saying that I can't do this or I am not made for this, you just have to shut that there itself. Because God has set up our to do only good things, it says. So we can do good things that He has planned for us long time ago or long ago. Come on, I want you to confess and declare that I am a masterpiece. Come on. Amen, amen. So what we understood so far that we are formed for God's purpose. Point number two was we are irreplaceable. All right, point number three was we are a masterpiece. There was not a point, but we can call it as we are God's masterpiece. Now, while we journey this, you know, I, I again, it's a very famous thing that we all say, I am in such a mess. Have you ever said that? I am in such a, a place that I don't know what to do, how to do. See, being houses, houses messy is a normal thing, but when you confess that on your life, that's a whole different dimension that opens up. Are you understanding? Again, that's, that's a word we should never, ever use it. But saying that, even that mess is an opportunity for you. 
you know, for, for some of us, we got to go in that mess to understand the real world that we are. You know, it's like um, the, the world's most precious diamond comes out of a mess. Gold comes out of a mess. You know, the worth increases when the mess is removed and the value increases. So when you, when you are in a mess and if you feel that you are in a mess, I would say that's an opportunity for you. That's an opportunity for us to actually magnify the real worth that you and me carry. Can we go to the next point? Don't worry about the mess. Don't worry about the mess. Because it's quite normal that we all will have this point where we fall, where we try to gather ourselves and we find in this mess. But it's an opportunity for you to come out clean out of that mess. It's a, it's a, you know, it's like a reality check. It's like a, uh, you know, stop, which gives you an indication. What is your actual worth? What is your actual goal that you as an individual is supposed to get out of this life? Psalm 51 verse two, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. As I said, everybody has been in a mess some way or the other. You know, it, can you imagine King David was in a mess? As Pastor Shaiju says, uh, he had an eye problem. Do you remember? He had an eye problem, like not the eye problem, but he had a problem when he was involved in things which was not in line with what God's plan was. He was involved in adulteration. Understand? And this is King David who is coming to God and saying and, and, and requesting him, wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion and it haunts me. The key was as as big as the person he was, he was in a place that he could recognize that this was wrong. That this was not in line with God. And that's exactly the mess that I'm talking about today. And this gave King David the opportunity to come out clean. And the request says it all. He, he, he's pleading. You know, he's pleading to God saying, wash me of my guilt. Purify me. Sanctify me so that I come out clean out of this. Amen. I don't know what mess you are today. I don't know what situation that makes you feel that this is a mess. But I declare and I, I decree that you're coming out clean out of that mess. You're coming out pure out of that mess. You're coming out of that mess like never before. It's transforming you right now. Amen. I don't know if you get that, receive it, if you, if, you, if you really connect to what I'm trying to say here. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to give you a picture where you should be walking in the right purpose that is aligned to you. You should be navigating in the right channel or the right agenda that God has set for you. Yes, agreed. There have been instances where you will fall there have been instances which will make you tumble down but it's about recognizing that and coming back pure out of it amen my fourth point if it is the fourth point fifth point right focus now this goes in alignment with what i just said from the mess point of view the only way that you can come out of the mess is by having the clarity or the focus that you should be in that season or you should be taking in that season. Amen? Okay, I'll, I'll put it in this way. Unless and until if I don't have a focus on my task, focus is deviated. Unless and until if the purpose is not in front of me as a vision or as a goal, there is always a possibility of me deviating from it. I'll give you a very 
real life examples have you been or have rather have you seen those horse races you know what they do to the horses is they actually blindfold them not really blind but yeah they blind the side you know it's like something like this the reason why they do is the horse could only focus what is up there and 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 they run in like a like a crazy speed and a slightest of slightest deflection of their sight can actually take them off track and not just them but it's a danger for the other people who are there in the race and they found that this is an effective and efficient way if they want to make this horse run straight although it's a circle though or at the oval whatever you call but it gives a sense it gives a direction it gives a focus what is the approach or what should be the approach can i tell you one thing if if you lack focus if you are in that place where you're not able to get to a clarity I, i'm going to give you a very practical way something that we should always do is write things down it sounds like a very cliche thing but trust me it works put it on your board put it on your desk put it on your calendar put it on your fridge that keeps reminding you that keeps reminding you that keeps telling you that this is your focus that this is your uh, you know this is your goal or this is your agenda that you are supposed to do and you know one of the things that i always uh you know want to do that this in this line is uh to work on a podcast okay pastor priji has been pushing all of us to do podcast individual podcast but and i came to a point that i got to do this you know i got to do this and uh, and i was preparing this this whole uh, week and when i came to this point it was a self revelation for me that i need to focus you know and i was learning and i was understanding this so this is what i did yesterday that in order to make sure that i'm focused on this plan of getting my podcast up and running i'm going to work i'm going to put this up i went and made a note and put it in front of my desk and i'm actually working on a series of podcasts which is connected to purpose i'm i'm giving you practical example i don't know if you connect that try this out try this out if you have a if you want to get something focused if you want to get something really get it done make sure that you put it down somewhere and you keep looking at it you keep looking at it amen uh, this is very very close and very special for me uh always have an understanding that you know god gave you the capacity to even move the mountain that what we sing today as well we can move mountains we have the capacity to move not just the difficult scenario but even to an ex- extent of this big rock or the big mountain that is in front of us which would project as if it's nearly impossible but let me tell you it is quite possible it is quite possible the thing that we got to do is to understand that what is your purpose to go and 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 seek and say that god i'm your son i'm your daughter and i know for the fact that i'm irreplaceable in your eyes i've made sure that relationship stays stronger and i'll focus the fact that if i am in a mess i come out of that mess very soon with a very strategic way with a very strategic understanding it would have been a mountain for those 20 million people who was traveling with moses to stop at red sea and say that i don't think we can do this i i don't think we can move to the other side of the uh sea or i i don't think we can even go across this whole journey but it was an understanding that was cultivated in them at that point of time saying that you have the capacity to move the mountain and that pushed them to take that step and go across that journey although it took them 40 long years but they still at that point of time when it came past they agreed and they stood and they said let's cross this mountain and they were were they successful 
were they successful crossing that sea yes they were and and we are thrown at that situation at times in our life you know i don't think this is possible i don't think this can be worked this is a mountain for me what do you think i i'll do i'm still trying to find where is my other sock i can't find my socks how can i do this i can't find this how do you expect me to do this big project i can't do this small kutti thing how do you expect me to do this release that word over yourself when you are faced with this situation that you can move the mountain you can move the mountain you can move the mountain you know i don't want to get into the details of the mountain but everyone would understand from their life experience everyone would have that elevation and you know uh, coming down phase it's up to you to stand there firm and straight and say that yes i can move the mountain galatians 6 9 says so let's not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't what does it says if we don't if we don't give up if that 20 million people would have given up at that day the history would have been different it would have been a different concept altogether it would have had a different theory uh, that was that could have been you know written but they didn't gave up they stood in front of their mountain and they declared it move the mountain okay uh, just focus on that word and look back or rather look into your life right now if you have a mountain at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing you know which basically represents that you cut off this mountain or you move of this mountain only if you don't give up only if you don't give up amen. amen what we shouldn't stop doing is stop doing good and that's the that's the purpose that you and me have is to do good in this journey is to do or is to align yourself with what god has set apart amen now this is just after the whole parable of uh, the fig tree that we uh, learned at the start can we all read this then jesus said to disciples have faith in god i tell you the truth you can say this to mountain okay hold on okay can we all rise come on i want everyone to you know come to a place of understanding that today right now we're going to put this mountain down so close your eyes and look into your life look into your situation look into your surroundings look into your uh you know the situations that you think is the mountain that you think is this big rock that is holding you back or that is slowing you down this is what i have to tell you and this is what i want you to declare can we all read this together then jesus said to the disciples come on read it together loud have faith in god i tell you the truth you can say this to the mountain come on louder may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen but you must really believe it it will happen and have no doubt in your heart if you have doubt take that off if you have something which in your heart says that it is still not possible i want you to kill that doubt right now if you have been stuck in this journey of financial bondage for so long you put yourself in so much of debt you put yourself 
you have submerged yourself in this bondage of, of, of finance and that is drowning you. I want you to declare this right now. The mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea right now. If you're struggling with issues, if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with situation that is making you feel sick, making you feel disconnected, I want you to tell to that mountain that may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. But you should believe it. You should agree it. And you should have no doubt. And you should have no doubt.